Alright, in the last video you looked at different types of maps that geographers use, and in this video you're going to learn why mapping is such an important part of geography. Here are your objectives. Pause the video, look them over, so that you know what information you need to be listening for as you watch. In the last video you learned how thematic maps show the way a variable is distributed in space. For example, the variable in this map is number of McDonald's. By mapping this variable, we can easily see where McDonald's restaurants are distributed throughout the world. But now let's say we want to dig deeper. Instead of just which countries have lots of McDonald's, I'd like to know why there are so many McDonald's in those countries. Or maybe I'd like to know what some possible effects are of a country having so many McDonald's. To answer those questions, I'm going to map other variables, and then I'm going to compare them to our map of McDonald's locations. When we compare two maps of different variables, we are looking for something called spatial association. Spatial association is the degree to which two variables are distributed similarly in space. If two variables have a high degree of spatial association, they tend to occur in the same places. A high degree of spatial association also suggests, although it doesn't necessarily prove, that the two variables are correlated somehow. Correlated means that one depends on the other in some way. On the other hand, if two variables have low spatial association, then they don't occur in the same place, and it's less likely that they are correlated. Let's look at some examples. Here is our map of McDonald's again, and now I want to compare it to another map per capita income by country. By comparing these two maps, what I'm asking is, is it possible that the number of McDonald's locations in a country is correlated with the country's wealth? I'll make a hypothesis. Wealthier countries will have more McDonald's because the population can afford to buy food instead of cooking their own. All right, let's test out my hypothesis by comparing the two maps. Remember, on the left, the bigger the dot, the more McDonald's there are. And on the right, the darker the blue, the wealthier the country is. I do see quite a bit of spatial association here. The countries with lots of McDonald's tend to be the countries that are wealthier. Take a look at the US. Lots of McDonald's, wealthy country. Europe, lots of McDonald's, lots of wealthy countries. Australia, lots of McDonald's, very wealthy country. So I would say that these two variables, the number of McDonald's and per capita income, do have a high degree of spatial association. This suggests, although again it doesn't prove, that McDonald's and income are somehow correlated. My hypothesis was that wealthier countries have more McDonald's because people there have more money to eat out. I'm still not sure if this is true and I should do more research on it, but these two maps support it. Now let's look at low spatial association. If two variables have low spatial association, then they are not found in the same places. Let's compare our map of McDonald's locations to this map of obesity. Is it possible that McDonald's and obesity are correlated? Seems likely. Here's another hypothesis. Countries that have lots of McDonald's will also be countries with lots of obesity because eating McDonald's will make people fat. Let's test it out. Compare the two maps. Remember in this map, the darker the red, the higher the percentage of obesity. I do see spatial association in some places, like the US. The US has many McDonald's and it has a high rate of obesity. But I also see many countries with no spatial association, or very little, like France and Brazil. These countries have lots of McDonald's, but low levels of obesity. Then there's countries like Algeria, that's right here. Algeria has no McDonald's, but it does have high obesity. So I would say that the two variables, the number of McDonald's and the prevalence of obesity, 
have low spatial association and are not highly correlated. That means that something else is causing obesity besides the existence of many McDonald's. Let's look at one last example. Here are two isopleth maps of Texas. Actually, the one on the left is isopleth, the one on the right is a chloropleth map by county. The map on the left shows the distribution of different Christian denominations living in Texas. Baptists and Methodists are in beige, and Catholics and Lutherans are in green. These are different Christian denominations. The map on the right shows parts of Texas that are dry in beige. Dry means that alcohol cannot be sold in those areas. The green is places where you can buy alcohol. Here's my question. Is there spatial association between religious denominations and the ban on alcohol? If so, what might that suggest about the relationship between different denominations and the consumption of alcohol? Comparing the maps, we see that there is high spatial association here. The two overlap almost perfectly. Baptist and Methodist areas are mostly dry areas while Catholic and Lutheran areas allow alcohol. So there is a relationship between these variables. My hypothesis is Baptists and Methodists disapprove of alcohol, whereas Catholics and Lutherans do not. All right, to sum up, spatial association shows whether two variables overlap in space. It's important because it gives us clues about how things might be correlated. All right, that's all for today's lesson. Please review the objectives, answer them on loose leaf so that you have a reference for tomorrow's do now. If you don't know the answer or aren't sure, rewind the video and review. See you in class.